I tried to warn everybody. I tried to warn people like Pump, who was a huge BlockFi guy. You've seen this. I mean, you've seen this. Spirit. I'll show it to you again. Hello, everyone. Today, our guest is Ran Nooner. Ran Nooner is the CEO of Onchain Capital, a crypto asset fund and advisory service. In this video, Ran Nooner talks about the contagion of FTX crash, the potential fall of BlockFi, and other major crypto companies in detail. If you enjoy this highlight videos, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you. Crypto lender BlockVe filed for bankruptcy protection Monday, days after suspending withdrawals amid the ongoing fallout from exchange FTX's bankruptcy filing. The company said it was filing for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection, indicating it hoped to restructure, continuing operations in the meantime. According to a press release, BlockFi has about $257 million in cash on hand. A Bermuda-based affiliate is also filing for liquidation, a similar process. According to the company's petition, BlockFi's executives estimate the company has more than 100,000 creditors and checked off the ranges. Executives estimate the company has between $1 billion and $10 billion in both assets and liabilities. The company's largest creditors include West Roundshires Incorporated, the legal name for FTX US, which has a $275 million unsecured claim, and the Securities and Exchange Commission, which has a $30 million unsecured claim. The majority of the other top 50 creditors' names were not shared. BlockFi's largest creditor is Ancora Trust Company, which the lender appears to have hired in February and now has a $730 million unsecured claim. And then we're going to expose a new player in the mainstream media. You know, we've been bashing mainstream media, but I'm going to expose to you one of the biggest players, one of the biggest people, that organizations that was complicit in this mainstream media scandal that we've been exposing. So again, this is going to be another one of those shows where we give you crypto alpha, but it's also going to be another one of those shows that we have to take down in 20, what is it, 20? 23 and a half hours, we're going to take down the show. A lot of you have asked, a lot of you have asked why we have to take these shows down after 23 and a half hours. And I keep saying to you guys, the problem is that what, hap what happens is when we start exposing big players, mainstream media, what they do is they start complaining to YouTube. And we know that YouTube take about 24 hours to respond to complaints. And so what we do is we put the video up and then within 23 and a half hours, what we do is we take the video down. So we got, we've got that for you. We've also got Mario Norfolk coming on the show today. We've got, a, we've got a long discussion with him around this mainstream media thing. We've got a FTX update for you guys. We're going to be talking about the BlockFi uh, liquidation and what that means and who else will possibly go down. We've got a Genesis update for you guys. Um, some fight around Binance. We're going to investigate whether that fight is real. And then there's a massive, massive, massive crypto development that we need to talk about. So huge show. Let's get into it. Let's look at the important charts of the day, the ones, the charts that we're looking at today. Bitcoin, 16,400, pretty much holding up strong. We had a green candle. Um, and I guess it's we're gonna, it's almost like a crunch time for Bitcoin. We're gonna wait for something to happen. The next chart that I'm watching is Dogecoin, uh, 10.1 cents. And this ties into one of the stories that we're gonna be talking about later on today. So this is another chart that I'm looking at today. Solana, 13.56. If any of you are following my trade, almost in the buy zone, probably at around 13.50, we wanna be buying Solana. So uh, around 13.30, we wanna be buying Solana. Um, if you've got conviction around the long term of Solana, FTM, Phantom, for those of you who took the trade yesterday, congratulations. You guys would be, I think you have about 15, 20% for those who took the trade yesterday. Silvergate Bank, which is one we've spoken about, has come down 11.12%. Uh, and we're going to talk about that. That's got to do with uh, the exposure to BlockFi or the little bit of exposure to BlockFi. And lastly, if we look at the traditional markets, 11,608 on the NASDAQ futures for December, which means that the market is flat, the Dow is flat, the uh, S&P 500 is flat. And what we're starting to see now is we're starting to see a major disconnect between crypto and world markets. And I saw that here. So I looked, the first thing I looked at here was I looked at the crypto, I looked at the fear and greed on traditional markets. The fear and greed on traditional markets are at 59. They, they at almost let me just switch that off because that's just going to disturb us the whole time um the fear and greed index on traditional markets is 59 which means well that's if you can believe CN cnn 
because you can't actually believe CNN. So I don't know if I believe their fear and greed index, but let's under the assumption that, um, let's say that, that you do believe CNN, you can see the traditional markets have a fear and greed index right now of 59. But when you look at crypto, because of all the capitulations that we've had, our fear and greed is only at 26. So whilst they are at greed, we are at uh, we are at um, at uh, uh, fear, not extreme fear, but there is fear, and you're seeing it in in many different places in the market. So you're seeing it in many, many, many different places in the market. A few that I want to show you. So the first thing that I noticed was that the Bitcoin spot to futures volume is climbing and it's at a high it's at the highest point that it's been in a long time definitely the highest point that it's been this year in fact let's see when the last so that they only have a data for this year but the spot to futures volume seems to be climbing climbing and climbing and climbing now that's signs of a healthy market what that means is it means that people aren't taking leverage anymore that's that's signs of a healthy market and if i were to sum up everything that happened in the bull run of 2021 and 2022. The one word that I would use to sum up everything that happened is leverage. Simple. This whole bull market was based on leverage, whether it was leverage through tokens, leverage through lenders, leverage through any of these organizations, these centralized organizations or the, de or the decentralized organizations. Everything in this bull market was actually driven by leverage. And what we're seeing now is we're seeing the collapse of all the leverage and we're seeing a much healthier market. We're seeing a much healthier market in many things. First of all, people aren't taking very much leverage. And so you've got the spot uh, to futures volume. You've got the spot volume increasing against the futures volume. Then you've got um, ETH. And what you can see around ETH is that over 230,000 ETH have been staked in the past week, which means that the thesis for ETH is people are buying ETH and they're starting to stake ETH. Okay, so that's what's going on right now. DeFi never files for bankruptcy. You know who files for bankruptcy? Well, everyone else. Genesis may or may not file for bankruptcy. Ryan Selker says that he thinks that Genesis is not going to file for bankruptcy. And I think he's, he might actually be right. I think in the 90th minute, Genesis may actually save themselves. But the problem is that now we've had BlockFi filing for bankruptcy. We saw that yesterday. They filed for Chapter 11. And if you look at the documents in BlockFi, you start seeing a lot of clues around what's happening in this industry. What you can see on the screen over here is they're saying that they've got more than 100,000 creditors. What that basically means is that there's more than 100,000 people that are affected by this. Okay, they have got a lot of assets. They say that they have over a billion dollars worth of assets, between one and $10 billion worth of assets. But then the problem is that they've got liabilities and they've got between one and $10 billion of liabilities. But somewhere here, there's a mismatch. And that's obviously why they had to file for chapter 11. If you carry on looking at this, let me try and do this like this. Just okay. So this is a list of all the major creditors that they have. And there's a whole lot of them that you need to be looking looking out for. The first one is Ankura Trust. We'll talk about those. The next one is this West Realm Shires, which we'll talk about. Okay, the next one is the SEC. BlockFi owe the SEC $30 million. Can you believe it? That the SEC is owed $30 million from BlockFi. The reason where that originated is, I don't know if you remember, but the SEC went after BlockFi and they eventually settled with BlockFi that BlockFi need to register their yield products with the SEC, but they need to pay a $100, settlement, $100 million settlement. And Eric Fuhis asks a good question. He says, hold on a second. If the SEC were owed $100 million, now they're only owed $30 million. It means that BlockFi paid them 70 million dollars so it means that like one of the most interested parties in this blockfi settlement is actually the sec because if the sec if blockfi doesn't trade out of this it means the sec loses 30 million dollars and i don't think the sec want to lose 30 million dollars but the, the big question is should the sec actually return the 70 million dollars they've got to try and make users whole just because they took 70 million dollars for absolutely, absolutely no reason. I mean, it's a, it was it was absolutely crazy at the time. And now, I mean, I, I say it again, it's absolutely crazy. The other one, by the way, that, that's owed money from, from BlockFi is Silvergate Bank. And you'll remember that I spoke about Silvergate Bank a few days ago where I said, look, I'm putting them on my buy list because I think that they have been unnecessarily hardly hit, sorry, unnecessarily hard hit by this crypto collapse. And I think that eventually they will recover. 
And at the time I said to you, I'm going to, I said, I'm going to wait for like $23, $24 before I, I start buying in. Now they are $25, $51. They were at $30 the other day. I'm waiting for about $23 before I start buying in. But then I'm going to start actually buying into uh, Silvergate because they came out with a statement and they said, look, um, the liability that we have is less than $20 million in deposits, which contains $10 million for the benefit of Silver Bank, Silvergate Bank. So in other words, there's a hole of between $10 and $20 million that Silvergate Bank will have a claim against BlockFi. What we also saw is that before BlockFi went into Chapter 11, what did they do? Well, they started selling off some of their crypto position. And the reason why they started selling off some of their crypto position probably is so that they could start funding the the uh, the liquidation process because that liquidation process is super 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 expensive so that's the blockfi liquidation the blockfi chapter 11 and the truth is we said to you guys a while back that we think in fact we didn't say we think we kind of said we know that blockfi is going to eventually collapse and the reason why we said that is because we got inside information at the time that there was a 600 million dollar loan between ftx and blockfi and you got to ask yourself how did that loan originate you can see that we spoke about this a while back and i said that on the november 11th i said that the blockfi has a 600 million dollar loan to alameda sbf tried to repay the loan in the last few days but as things were unfolding but it didn't and i guess he must have paid some of the loan because there's only 250 million dollars of that loan left and we'll see in a second where that money that 250 million dollar loan was used to do and to, used to and you can see the flow of money because that's super 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 interesting ftx rescues rescues blockfi takes consumer funds lends it to alameda alameda lends it to this company called emergent which is actually just a shell company and then that company emergent is the company that that where sbf body stake in robin hood pretty simple little scam i raised that flag i mean look when i raised that flag oh so i raised that flag on the 13th of july 2021 i said this is very, very, very bad news. And what I was trying to do was I was trying to alert everybody that this big company that was raising money at three and four and five and six billion dollar valuations actually wasn't as big and as healthy as everybody thought. If you look at the timeline, if you look at the timeline here, um, they were raising, just get this, they were raising at valuations of 3.8 billion and 3 billion. And if you look at them just a year before that or six months before that, they were raising at $450 million. This company went from $450 million to $3 billion and $3.8 billion. And when that happened, I raised the flag and I said, guys, this thing is not sustainable. This thing is about to collapse. It cannot carry on like this because what they were doing, all they were doing to make money, the only way that they were making money was by buying GBTC shares at par value and dumping them on retail investors and taking the premium. The problem is that when the premium went into a discount, well, we all saw what happened. And as I said, I tried to warn everybody. I tried to warn people like Pump, who was a huge BlockFi guy. You've seen this. I mean, you've seen this. I'll show it to you again. So what about BlockFi? So Rocket what, ship, get on board. So why is Block? Why does BlockFi need this much money, first of all? What are they going to do? Growing over 500 employees now around the world, 220. So that was Pump, and I'm not going to play more of it because I think I don't want to humiliate the guy, and I'm sure that he feels the pain because he went on on another video, and on this video, video he said that BlockFi was actually bang, bang. his biggest Today investment. I'm announcing the largest investment that I've ever made. BlockFi has raised a $350 million Series D at a $3 billion valuation. The round was co-led by Bain Capital, DST, myself via Pop Investments, and Tiger Global. Other great investors in this round include my friends at Bracket Capital, Morgan Creek Digital, Valar Ventures, and Susquehanna. Zach and Flory have built an amazing business. Today, that business employs over 500 people globally. They have over $15 billion in assets on the platform. They've grown the user base from 10,000 to over 225,000 users. And today they are doing more than $50 million in monthly revenue. I try to tell them that the $50 million in monthly revenue wasn't money that they were making from interest payments. It was money that they were making by dumping GBTC shares on retail, which was a non-sustainable model. Problem is no one would listen. Not them, uh, not McCormack, who 
I mean, he, he really doesn't get it. I mean, I trust BlockFi over a smart contract. Dude, we built smart contracts because you cannot uh, trust centralized entities. It just doesn't work. I don't know. Maybe one day he'll come around and he'll actually start getting it. The company had to pay $100 million in February as part of a settlement with the SEC and several state regulators over allegations its high-yield crypto lending product violated state and federal securities laws. As part of the settlement, BlockFi also had to register its BlockFi yield product with the SEC. If you enjoy this highlight videos, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you.